Hi, so um, today's topic is kidney transplantation. Kidney transplantation is by far the best treatment option available to patients with end-stage kidney disease, although only 4% ever receive a kidney transplant. Average wait times in the U.S. for a cadaveric kidney to become available usually ranges from 2 to 5 years. An advantage of um, kidney transplant when compared with dialysis is that it reverses many of the pathophysiological changes associated with renal failure. It also el eliminates the dependence on dialysis and the accompanying dietary and lifestyle restrictions. Kidney transplantation has been very successful these days with a one-year graft survival rate for cadaver transplants at 90% and for live donor transplants at 95%. Kidney transplant recipient selection. The candidacy is determined by a variety of medical and psychosocial factors that vary among transplant centers. Some transplant programs exclude patients who are morbidly, morbidly obese or who continue to smoke despite smoking cessation interventions. Certain patients, particularly those with cardiovascular disease and diabetes, are considered at high risk and must be carefully evaluated and then monitored closely after the transplantation. For a small number of patients who are approaching end-stage kidney disease, preemptive transplantation that is before dialysis is actually required is possible if a living donor is available. Kidney transplant recipe and selection. Contraindications to transplantation include disseminated malignancies, untreated cardiac disease, chronic respiratory failure, extensive vascular disease, chronic infection, and unresolved psychosocial disorders. At one time, patients with a diagnosis of HIV were denied the opportunity for kidney transplantation. However, centers that have included HIV-infected patients demonstrate graft and patient survival rates similar to those in the HIV-negative population. Histocompatibility studies, including HLA testing and cross-matching, are done before the transplant. The more similar the antigens of the donor are to those of the recipient, the more likely the transplant will be successful and rejection will be avoided. The kidney transplant donor sources includes deceased donors with compatible blood type, blood relatives, emotionally related living donors, altruistic living donors, and paired organ donation. Expanding the living donor pool is one of the best possibilities for decreasing the size of the wait waiting list and reducing wait times for people needing a deceased donor. Live donor. Live donors undergo an extensive multidisciplinary evaluation to be certain that they are in good health and have no history of disease that would, de that would place them at high risk for developing kidney failure or other operative complications. Psychosocial and financial evaluations are also done. Cross matches are done at the time of the evaluation and about a week before the transplantation to ensure that no antibodies to the donor are present or that the antibody titer is below the allowed level. Advantages of a live donor kidney include better patient and graft survival rates regardless of the histocompatibility match. Immediate organ availability, immediate function because of minimal cold time. This is the time the kidney is out of the body and not getting blood supply during which time the kidney is placed in a cold bath. An ECG and X -ray, X, chest X-ray are also done. Renal ultrasonography and renal arteriography or three-dimensional CT scanning are also performed to ensure that the blood vessels supplying each kidney are adequate to ensure that there are no anomalies and to determine which kidney will be removed. A transplant psychologist or social worker will determine if the donor is emotionally stable and able to deal 
with the issues related to organ trans organ donation. The lab studies frequently will also include 24-hour urine creatinine clearance, total protein, a CBC, CMP, and um, testing for hepatitis B and C, HIV, and CMV, cytomegalovirus. Deceased donor. The brain-dead donor must have effective cardiovascular function and be supported on a ventilator to preserve the organs. Even if the donor carried a signed donor card, permission from the donor's legal next of kin is still requested after brain death is determined. The kidneys are removed and can be preserved for up to 72 hours, but most transplant surgeons prefer to transplant kidneys before the cold time, the time outside of the body when being transported from the deceased donor to the recipient reaches 24 hours. Surgical procedure in live donor. Laparoscopic donor nephrectomy is the most common technique for removing kidney in a living donor and begins one or two hours before the recipient surgery. After the kidney has been removed, it is flushed with a chilled sterile electrolyte solution and prepared for immediate transplant into the recipient. The recipient is surgically prepared for the kidney transplantation in a nearby operating room. The surgery for the donor usually begins one to two hours before the recipient's surgery is started. The recipient. The kidney transplant in the recipient is usually placed in the iliac fossa. The right iliac fossa is preferred. Before any incision is made, a urinary catheter is placed into the bladder. An antibiotic solution is instilled to distend the bladder and decrease the risk of infection. A crescent-shaped incision is made extending from the iliac crest to the symphysis pubis. Rapid vascularization is critical to prevent the ischemic injury to the kidney. The donor artery is anastomosed to the recipient's internal or external iliac artery. The donor vein is anastomosed to the recipient's external iliac vein. On completion of the anastomosis, clamps are released and blood flow to the kidney is re-established. The kidney should become firm and pink. Urine may begin to flow from the ureter immediately. The donor ureter is attached to the bladder and the transplant in total takes about three to four hours. This is a picture of um, the kidney transplant, the surgical incision in picture A and the transplanted kidney um, in picture B. It shows the internal iliac artery and the vein anastomos, the external iliac artery and the vein anastomos, and the grafted ureter into the bladder. Nursing management, preoperative care. Dialysis may be required before surgery for any significant problems such as fluid overload or hyperkalemia. Emotional and physical preparations are necessary. A patient on peritoneal dialysis must empty the peritoneal cavity of all dialysate solution. The vascular axis extremity should be labeled dialysis axis no procedures to prevent use of affected extremity for blood pressure measurement, blood drawing, or IV infusions before the patient undergoes surgery. Other um, studies may also be done for um, for uh, preoperatively for the donor as well as the recipient like the ECG, chest x-ray, and lab studies. Post-operative post -op, post care in the live donor. Care is similar to that for an open or laparoscopic nephrectomy. Um, the close monitoring of renal function and hematocrit is um, done. The donor who has had as open nephrectomy experiences greater pain than the donor who has had a laparoscopic procedure. In general, all donors have more pain than their recipients. Donors who have 
undergone an open surgical approach are ready to be discharged from the hospital in four to five days and can usually return to work in six to eight weeks laparoscopic donors are able to be discharged from the hospital two to four days and can return to work in four to six weeks Post-operative care in the recipient. Maintenance of fluid and electrolyte balance is first priority. Large volumes of urine soon after the transplant kidney is placed occurs as a result of the new kidney's ability to filter the bun and abundance of fluids during operation and initial renal tubular dysfunction. Urine output during this phase may be as high as 1 liter per hour and gradually decreases as the bunacrea and serum creatinine levels return towards normal. Urine output is replaced with fluids milliliter by milliliter hourly. So very accurate um, urine output is to be measured. Acute tubular necrosis occurs because of prolonged cold ischemic times and the use of marginal cadaveric donors. A sudden decrease in urine output in the early postoperative period is a cause for concern. It may be due to dehydration, rejection, a urine leak, or obstruction. Infection and complications of surgery and the purpose and the side effects of immunosuppression. Maintaining the catheter patency is, is necessary to monitor for accurate. The goals of immunosuppressant therapy are to adequately suppress the immune response and maintain sufficient immunity to prevent overwhelming infection. The success of the kidney transplantation depends on changing the patient's immunological response so that the new kidney is not rejected as a foreign organ. Immunosuppressant drugs protect, uh, protect the transplanted organ and are taken by the transplant recipient for the rest of his life. These drugs include corticosteroids, anti-lymphocyte preparations, monoclonal antibodies, and cyclosporin. Patients taking these drugs are at an increased risk for death by viral, fungal, bacterial, or protozoal inf infection due to, um, Im due to the immunosuppression. Rejection. Rejection is the most serious complication of transplantation and is a leading cause of graft loss. A reaction occurs between the tissues of the transplanted kidney and the antibiotics and cytotoxic T cells in the recipient's blood. These substances treat the new kidney as a foreign invader and cause tissue destruction, thrombosis, and eventual kidney necrosis. Hyperacute rejection occurs within minutes to hours after transplantation. Clinical manifestations include fever, hypertension, and pain at the transplant site. This condition may necessitate immediate removal of the transplanted kidneys. Acute rejection is the most common type of rejection with kidney transplant. Clinical manifestations include sudden oliguria, fever, hypertension, fluid retention, enlarged tender kidney, lethargy, elevated serum, creatinine, bun, and potassium levels. Immunosuppressant drugs will have to be increased. Chronic rejection is a process that occurs over months or years and is irreversible. There is gradual increase in the bun and serum creatinine levels. Conservative management and dialysis may be necessary. Complications of kidney transplantation include infection, cardiovascular diseases, malignancies, chronic kidney disease, and corticosteroid-related complications. The most common infection observed in the first month are pneumonia, wound infections, and urinary tract infections, as well as the IV line or drain infections. Underlying systemic illnesses such as diabetes, mellitus, SLE, malnutrition, and old age can further complicate the infections. Transplant recipients usually receive prophylactic um, antibiotics and antifungal drugs such as diflucan to prevent these infections. Cardiovascular diseases is the leading cause of death after renal transplantation. 
hypertension, dyslipidemia, diabetes mellitus, smoking and rejection and infections are all contribute to cardiovascular diseases. The overall incidence of malignancy is greater in kidney transplant recipients than in the general population. The most common types of cancer after transplantation are basal and squamous cell carcinoma of the skin, Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and Kaposi sarcoma. Regular screening for other cancers like cancers of the liver, stomach, oropharynx, anus, vulva and penis is also done. Recurrence of the original kidney disease may also occur and may necessitate a second kidney transplant. Corticosteroid related complications include dyslipidemia, cataract and glucose intolerance. And in the first year after transplantation, corticosteroid doses are usually decreased to 5 to 10 milligrams per day. The use of tacrolimus and uh, cyclosporin has allowed the corticosteroid doses to be much lower than they were in the past. Next, evaluation. Maintenance of ideal body weight, acceptance of chronic disease, no infections, no edema, hematocrit, hemoglobin, serum albumin, serum creatinine bond levels are in an acceptable range. Thus, kidney transplantation is by far the best treatment option available to patients with end-stage kidney disease as it reverses many of the pathophysiological changes associated with renal failure. Two main types of kidney transplantation are cadaver transplantation plants as and the live donor transplant which uh, has a slightly better survival rate than the cadaver transplants. Um, HLA typing and cross matching are done to make sure that, um, to check for histocompatibility and <coughs> the kidney transplant <coughs> in the recipient is usually placed in the iliac fossa. The success of the kidney transplant depends on changing the patient's immunological response so that the new kidney is not rejected as a foreign organ. The three main complications that you have to watch um, during um, soon after kidney transplant is infection and rejection. Rejection is the most serious complication and um, uh, there are two, three types: is hyperacute, acute, and chronic. Hyperacute is um, occurs within the first 24 hours, and now the acute rejection will be from after 24 hours. And the manifestations include sudden oliguria, fever, hypertension, fluid retention, enlarged kidney, tender kidney, lethargy, elevated serum creatinine, bun, and potassium levels. And for this, immunosuppressant drugs will have to be increased. The main complications include wound infections, cardiovascular diseases, malignancies, return of the chronic kidney disease, and the complications related to corticosteroid use.